so again, uh, how is everyone? My name is Dr. Mary Mogwechwe uh, from Mount Kenya University. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, we are here for the discussion session two, and we the topic is about youth entrepreneurship and social business in Africa. Uh, we have our moderator for this session. I can see he's already on. And this is Professor Mwandi Peter Wanderi. And he's the principal corporate services, Mount Kenya University. We also have the presenters, like uh, you can see that their photos have been, uh, uh, we can see them. And we have number one, Dr. Feristas Jeru. Dr. Feristas Jeru is from Mount Kenya University and from the School of Business and Economics. Uh, we have Madam Seno Namwandi, uh, board member, Business Intellectual Property Authority, uh, WIDHOP, Namibia. We also have another presenter, uh, allow me to say this, Professor Oliwa Siun Omatayo. Uh, this is Professor, sorry for that. This is Professor HPERS Department, University of Education, Winba. Uh, I can also see he's also uh, works with the University of Health and Allied uh, Science, Ghana. We have also one more person, and this is Dr. Sarah Kimaru. Uh, this is the Dean, School of Social Sciences, Mount Kenya University. Again, we also have Dr. Charles Muli, whom I have seen already. He's in, and I can see him. Our founder and Chief Executive Officer, Muri Children's uh, Family. Allow me to invite all of you to this wonderful session, and we are going to learn more and have a very productive session. Now, please, uh, our moderator of the day, Professor uh, Peter Wanderi, kindly come on board. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. And thank you for that introduction, and you've taken us through very well. I hope I'm, I'm audible. Yes, Professor, you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So moving forward, we shall have brief presentations from everybody. Remember, we are panelists, and the panelists will be invited one by one, and we have five minutes to make a presentation. And a bell will be rung if you, please, if you exceed that. And I'll be calling one person by one. But I'm happy to say this in introducing everybody, that, that I happen to be very happy because I know all of you. And uh, from West Africa, from South Africa, and uh, to East Africa and North Africa, these are people we have worked a lot on, issues to do with what they are discussing. And I'm wishing each one of them a pleasant presentation. And therefore, as we, we know, this is on youth entrepreneurship and the social business in Africa. And it is very good because it's a timely discussion because this is a topical issue in Africa. And uh, since I have not seen Dr. Felista, I will need to be told later on by my colleagues when she joins. So I could start quickly with the person that I have been talking to this morning. That is Professor Omotayo Olusuen. And uh, Professor, again, each one of you will give you four to five minutes, make a quick presentation and we can move to the next person. Professor Omotayo, from Ghana, all the way from Ghana. Over to you. Well, um, uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, I want to make a quick um, uh, correction of my description. I am in the University of Health and Life Sciences in Ho, Ghana. The issue of um, youth um, entrepreneurship, particularly in Africa, uh, has been a matter of interest and concern to every African that knows that the future of um, a, any nation, and particularly the African continent, belongs to the youth that are coming after us. And um, business is a substantial means of livelihood for young people, just as it was for us, when we were growing up, um, 
In matters of entrepreneurship, I noticed or we know that across um, the whole of um, African universities, uh, you find a, a particular course that is usually either university wide or compulsory for all students, which is also which is looked at as entrepreneurship studies. How far this uh, entrepreneurship studies in Africa has translated into, into practicality as these youths get into the world of business or when they get into the labor market is, a, is another matter of concern. But I am from the, I'm from the uh, ecosystem, sports uh, business ecosystem. And to a very large extent, uh, quite unfortunately, I have seen across most African countries that I have visited or that I have worked, and I found that um, sports entrepreneurship has never been part of the curriculum of uh, most courses, I mean, most universities, uh, part of the content of the sports ent entrepreneurship and course in most universities, uh, even maybe across the world. And um, I think um, Africa should take the lead in identifying those sports business activities that we can start introducing our youth to such that um, they can be independent and become sole owners of their initiative in terms of implementation and having a livelihood through it, such that sports will be another industry in which our youth can grow into and can be entrepreneurs in such um, areas. There are so many areas that our youth can go into in terms of sports entrepreneurship. They can go into sports entertainment uh, by organizing competitions, seeking sponsorship for the competitions, and ensuring that they run it in a manner that it will be uh, profit-oriented to earn them um, uh, uh, a living. Because the whole essence of entrepreneurship is to promote a decent human existence and um, a wholesome um, uh, livelihood. So I will, my, my take is that there should be a rethink in the content of the curriculum of the courses across Africa, if not the, of what we are discussing in Africa, across African universities to ensure that uh, sports entrepreneurship is included in uh, the content of uh, those uh, courses. I think that is my take for now. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor. I can need no, see sports people know how to keep time. You did need, not need to be reminded about the time, keep it up. And now we move on to the next presenter. And I am still moving slowly by slowly because I'm, I'm not using any order because um, I, I am trying to see who I had uh, connected with Adialon. And at this point, allow me to invite Madam Seno Namwandi. Seno, no, I'm trying to look for your, if you are in, Seno. Yes, I'm in, I'm in. Thank you, thank you. As Seno comes, let me say that I have worked with her in Namibia at the International University of Management, and now she's working there also, she's in uh, South Africa. And Seno, over to you, five minutes, make your presentation, and I'm happy to see you after very many years. Welcome, Seno. It's good to see you too, sir. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it to discuss um, something that I'm incredibly passionate about, which is entrepreneurship. But the angle that I approach entrepreneurship is that of innovation and intellectual property, because I am an intellectual property professional. And so when I look at entrepreneurship on the continent, my concern is the ecosystem that has not been built, a sufficient ecosystem that has not been adequately built on the continent to support and encourage entrepreneurship. At present, what we are looking at, an entrepreneurship ecosystem that will allow for entrepreneurship to thrive on the continent requires academia, government, and private sector to work in what we call a triple helix relationship 
to actually conduce to have a conducive environment for entrepreneurship. What that looks like is government creating the legislative framework within which that they can operate in. I was a board member at the Business Intellectual Property Authority. And what that looks like is creating registration processes that are important for entrepreneurship. So your ability to register a business in a country, what we call an index that the World Bank has currently done away with, the ease of doing business index. The ease of doing business is a measure that we look at how easy is it for a business to register in a country. The different aspects of that registration include tax, include property registration, and also your ability to operate within the re regulation and legislative framework within a country. Now, prior to the World Bank doing away with this index, we see that most African countries were not performing well in terms of the ease of doing business. One particular index that I was very interested in is the length of time it took to register a business in a country. So you look at countries like Rwanda and Mauritius that take hours or minimum six days to register the business. In the US, it takes approximately, at the time when I was looking at these indices, so I stand to be corrected, it took approximately six days for all your documentation to be complete. To give you an example of why that is important, in Namibia in 2019, it took 66 days for a business to be registered. So something so simple like that has the ability to actually deter entrepreneurship and not make entrepreneurship something that is conducive for most people. So something as simple as that is very important to actually encourage entrepreneurship. So that's the government's perspective. So from private sector, we are looking at funding. So this is private equity, venture capital, etc. All those types of activities on the continent are markedly lower than the counterparts globally. So the amount of free flow capital that is in the economy in the African continent is not as high as it is as you would find in other parts of the world. So we need to also look at the type of investment that is going on on the continent right now in terms of fueling entrepreneurship. Finally, I want to look at academia. The type of research and curriculum that we have right now in academia on the continent does not equally always translate into entrepreneurial activity. When we look at how academia plays a role in entrepreneurship, I want to give the example of Google. Very few people know that Google was actually a PhD research proposal. So in able, to enable entrepreneurship, we also need to look at the research that we are doing on the continent, enabling curriculum that actually encourages the research proposals that will then be taken over into the private sector for funding, and then government creating the, the regulation and legislative framework within which that entrepreneurs can operate in to register businesses quickly. So the case of Google is very interesting. They were Larry Page and Sergey Brin were PhD students at Stanford University. Why intellectual property is very important is because all people know, all um, PhD, masters, and staff members of universities know that any work that you do at a university becomes copyright and the ownership is that of the universities. Now, Sergey Brin and Larry Page, because they created an algorithm, a search algorithm during their PhD proposal, they entered into an intellectual property sharing agreement between themselves and Stanford University. Stanford University was then able to generate funding and raise funds for patent applications and also to support the two PhD candidates in setting up their business. And eventually Google is what it is today. Up to today, Stanford still receives royalties from Google because Stanford has an intellectual property ownership of the algorithm together with the two founders of Google. So that is the type of ecosystem that we need to be able to create on the continent to generate and stimulate 
entrepreneurial activity. Entrepreneurial activity has the potential to elevate economies. And what we are seeing on the continent is a lot of informal activity that is not being generated into the formal economy. Now, I'll leave it up to the audience and to my other panelists for us to discuss whether indeed we need to formalize the structures that we are currently seeing on the continent or adapt our structures to meet the informal activity that we now see on the continent? That is a question that I still battle with with myself. And then we figure out how to now actually positively um, impact the, the economies. Thank you very much, Prof. Wanderi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Seno Namwandi. And uh, we'll come back to that. I now, yes. Can, can you just check your messages? This is Lamia from the Union Center. I just sent you a message on chat. Uh, sorry, I hadn't checked and uh, I could, do I check before I continue? Well, I invite the pers other person and then we could be looking through the messages. Can you just check now? Yes, maybe after the speakers. Uh, no, I have seen them, but I hadn't seen them before. Um, well, I, sorry, I hadn't seen this, but now, can we break and do that? Can we invite him? Yes, please. Yes, uh, sorry, I hadn't seen the message because sometimes when you're moderating, you concentrate on other things. Sorry and uh, there, is, there is a request that uh, we invite Professor Yunus to first of all give some comment, but I would have requested one thing also that Professor, if I had seen that message, I'd have requested that Professor Yunus also gets a chance to listen to Dr. Muli, because Dr. Muli again is a social entrepreneur who actually has 3,500 children he feeds every day and doesn't look for help, but he do, does it. So my, I will give the, if it was possible, I would have been wanted to invite Dr. Muli to quickly say what you say, and then we invite the uh, professor. Yeah, let's go ahead, let's go ahead, do that. Okay, invite Dr. okay, Muli. thank you. Professor, Dr. Muli, uh, come and talk, and I'm happy as he comes on to say, I'm, in, I'm, I'm introducing two giants, both of them are giants in their own ways, and I'm very happy because these are internationally renowned persons, Dr. Muli, who has the largest family on earth of 3,500 children he feeds every day. Dr. Muli, over to you. <coughs> Dr. Muli. Uh, to join you in this uh, conference, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be one of you, <coughs> uh, because when we are talking about and entrepreneurship, sustainable uh, development and so forth. We are talking also about our youth and what is that we can offer at this time when uh, the, the world is so much limited into what they can offer due to the population. And um, over and over I've been advocating more on the youth, the children, and I give them a complete, um, you know, package that takes them to another level of adult, being well equipped with the knowledge and well equipped also in, in, in manpower. As I talk about the empowering them with the, with the ability uh, to do their businesses, how to do it. <laughs> Therefore, these are all the things that we need to look. I, of course, young people, here in Kenya, in Africa, make up the book of Africa's total population with an estimated of 75% of the continent's population. And also most of them, <clears throat> young people are below that five years. Uh, this filling our continent with incredible energy and the potential, but with that energy that we cannot make uh, use of it unless and then we are prepared. Of course, yet throughout Africa, uh, youth are facing unprecedented um, 
challenges of unemployment and the life threatening risk. And this is really um, uh, making up the efforts of Africa to put the young people, push the children of the right track. But let's come to uh, business. Because business, with business then, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how much you have, but the creativity as well as innovation that need to be passed on to our young people. Of course, social business models have great potential to address the barriers and mobilize youth to engage in effort to achieve significant social objectives, including unemployment creation, poverty reduction, inclusion, and integration. Um, why do we do that? Well, children family is a charitable trust registered and incorporated here in Kenya. And uh, of course, we have been able to move to other countries in Africa and also in places like in USA, Canada, Germany, in Europe, and so forth. Our core business is saving children's lives through integrated community empowerment uh, programs. Uh, we target unvulnerable unvul children, street children, orphans, child mothers, youth from difficult environments and marginalized communities. This is also uh, something that uh, we cannot be uh, part of something that we can be left out. It is that we oversee their rehabilitation, education and skills training, among other services for transformation, because that is where the, the, the C or, or core values, where they are integrated. We oversee their rehabilitation, education, and skills training, among other services for transformation to a dignified life rule. And the uh, MCF programs, of course, strategy is to transition the rescued children, young people, boys and girls, and men and women, and the youth to engage in effort that eventually lead to social inclusion and integration, employment creation, poverty reduction, and event uh, valuable members of society. Uh, that is our main focus. MCF, social business model. Yes, there are so many models all over the world, but we have come up with a model that is working here in Kenya. And uh, I, I know it can take a lot of time to explain, but I'll just move because another time will be available for me to be able to bring a concrete a solution to African problem. MCF initiates scalable social entrepreneurial uh, ventures to enhance its program's sustainability. Uh, these ventures focus on one, general agriculture and horticulture for export, hospitality, and uh, industry technical vocational skills training and the cottage industry. And uh, we do most of the thing practicals here because we have all the schools from primary school uh, from uh, PP1, PP2, PP3, and then high school, secondary school, then to uh, college that we offer many different courses, including entrepreneurship. We also focus on programs that nurture young people's skills to develop careers, pipelines, and start businesses or become self-employed. The other point which is very important for me to mention to you is and the great relevant education and the technical vocational skills training, the entrepreneurship training to facilitate entrepreneurship skills development. Main skills training areas are a garment and a souvenir production. Uh, we have also building construction, welding, carpentry, electrical and the plumbing, clay works, and also entrepreneur studies common uh, courses. Uh, we are also undertake to mentor alongside formal and informal education to help young people fill business related knowledge gaps they may have due to their age or background of 
since they were rescued. And this is what it can help our young people when we are able to Dr. Muli, Dr. Muli, maybe there is a jam in the network. However, we could uh, say mm. that might have been enough so that we can invite Professor Yunus. Uh, Dr. Muli, that was an unfortunate stop because you did not stop um, as you had anticipated, but we invite Professor Yunus. And in introducing Professor Yunus to Dr. Muli, because this should go on record, I met Dr. Muli in Germany making a presentation on invite, invited by the organizers of the conference because he does a lot of work in Kenya in social business and uh, activities. So I invite, take this opportunity to invite uh, Professor Yunus to make his remarks and then we can proceed. Professor Yunus, Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Moderator. Well, I just wanted to greet you, um, say hello to all of you. I'm very excited that uh, this uh, session could take place and we meet all those uh, distinguished speakers to speak on this subject, entrepreneurship particularly, because that's a big component of uh, social business movement that we build around it. Uh, and we were always saying that all human beings are born as entrepreneurs. That's why it's, it's very important for us. And we said when we were in the caves, we were not uh, looking for jobs. Uh, we are not sending job application to anybody from cave number five to cave number 10. Uh, we just went ahead and did things by ourselves. And that's the human history. So entrepreneurship is natural to human beings. We grew up as an uh, entrepreneur, as a problem solver, as a go-getter. But somehow economics uh, kind of came and took it away from us. They said, no, you have to have a job. A job is your ultimate. Without job, you are nobody. So we have designed everything to create, uh, to uh, find a job, the desperation of getting a job or desperation of not getting a job and so on. So we are trying to see how to design social businesses to make, help everybody to become entrepreneurs. One of the early experience that we have in uh, making, turning people into entrepreneur uh, was through microcredit. And you're familiar with Grameen Bank perhaps and all the microcredit programs in Africa and all over the world. Microcredit is not something to provide you with a job. Microcredit provides you with finance so that you can start a, an enterprise by yourself with the small money, sometimes as small as $5, it could be $10, maybe $100, $500. That's about the money you need to turn yourself into an entrepreneur. So today, globally, there are millions and millions of women particularly with a very low income, turn themselves into entrepreneurs because they have access to finance. So I have been always appealing to people to draw their attention that finance is the oxygen of entrepreneurship. That's the point I wanted to make. You have to bring finance on the table so that people can turn into entrepreneurs. Without providing finance, without making arrangement for finance, the, no matter how much you preach about entrepreneurship, it will go nowhere because people cannot go with empty hands and start entrepreneur. Somebody has to provide them the funds, the finance, so that they can become entrepreneur. So that's a very important thing, is if you provide the finance and all human beings, irrespective of where you are born, what kind of background we have, what kind of skill we have, all human beings can become into, come, turn into entrepreneurs. So that's one concluding remarks that I wanted to make. Another part of the, the point that I wanted to make uh, when you talk about entrepreneurship, we saw how women becomes very good entrepreneurs. And you see microcredit is focusing on women all the time because they are so much more dedicated entrepreneurs and they bring their creativity, bring their dedication to turn themselves into entrepreneurs. And then we say this uh, finance would be available to people that I'm talking about, people at the very bottom of the income level, only if you create financial system or financial institution as a social business. If you want to make money by lending money to the poor people, you'll always have a tendency to become loan sharks. So you go in the wrong direction. So that's one underlining point that uh, social, the finance that you may want to make to the entrepreneurs uh, could ideally be social business finance so that you are not interested in making money, you're interested to turning people into entrepreneurs and in a sustainable way. After microcredit, what we have done 
we have created another social business uh, called uh, Social Business Venture Capital Fund. We tell the, all the unemployed young people in the country and the very low income people who are desperate to get a job, don't get a job, don't have a job. It's very hard to find a job. So we said, forget about job. You tell yourself again and again, I'm not a job seeker, I'm a job creator. I'm an entrepreneur. And behave like an entrepreneur, think like an entrepreneur. And then you'll find your way. And if you need money, we have the fund. We created a social business venture capital fund, which is just a pot of money waiting to be invested in anybody who is interested in creating a business. So anybody who wants to create a business among young people, unemployed young people in Bangladesh, we said, we are here to provide you the finance. So we have been doing it. Now we have over 80,000 young people running their businesses with the financing from the Social Business Venture Capital Fund. What is the specialty of the Social Business Venture Capital Fund? Specialty is it doesn't want to make money for itself. It doesn't want to take profit out of this business of investing money to others. Only thing it's interested in to go to the unemployed young people with an idea to start a business and get the money back so that the money doesn't fall short. It continues to be available to further investments into other people and so on and so forth. Uh, so we tell the young people that we are not interested in your profit. You make the profit and you give the money to us to return, your invest, return our investment so that we get our original investment. Nothing more than that. How do we cover our cost? We provide some services from the fund. Uh, we provide service training services. We have constant monitoring services for all the entrepreneurs who run their businesses. We have all the accounting services we provide to them. So uh, all the warning services that we provide to them. Uh, so for that, we charge a fee. And that fee covers all the cost of operation and everything. So we don't have to add, add anything extra to the investment that we made and all the investment come back. So that's an entrepreneurship uh, turned into a real business and with the financials help. So finance will be the core of the, everything that we say. It's a social business. It's not a charity. It's something that you have to pay back. And we are always looking at the bottom level of the people. That's where the problem is. That's where people, instead of looking for jobs, they should be turning themselves into entrepreneurs. Now we are creating something called three zero clubs for the young people, telling them that you have to look for creating a three zero world, world without uh, uh, global warming, zero global warming, zero wealth concentration, and zero unemployment. So this will be the goal of the three zero clubs and creating a new three zero clubs. Within the three zero clubs, uh, you start planning for entrepreneurial activity, social business activity to achieve the three zero goals. That is the kind of a, uh, framework that we want to put in front of the young people. And Africa is, is a country of the youth. Uh, uh, it's, it's known for a uh, higher percentage of uh, population being coming from the young people. And this is an opportunity to bring that finance so that they can turn themselves into entrepreneurs. I'm very happy that you're discussing this and uh, congratulations to Dr. Moli for wonderful work you're doing. See if you can turn this into a social business which will cover the cost and you continue with it uh, uh, and expand your uh, activities as far as you can go. And I'll stop here and let you uh, continue with the discussion. I'm delighted that you could uh, uh, get me uh, to talk, say a few words. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. But Professor, don't leave us yet. I will request the Secretariat to request everybody who is on to turn on the uh, the, 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 the cameras so that we can all take a photo with uh, yeah, amongst let's ourselves. Let's take kindly, a kindly, everybody, Thank yes. And, uh, and, and I am a self-appointed ambassador for Muli Children Family. And therefore, on that position, I invite Professor Yunus to come yeah. and visit us at Muli's Children Family. And Absolutely. this is I'll be delighted to do that. He's doing wonderful the meeting work. of the two persons to make a difference in African continent and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. So everybody have your cameras on. We don't want to take a photo. And uh, I would request the Secretariat uh, Wise Center, Yunus Center, please take lead. Yunus Center, take lead, take lead. Are you there? Uh, I can't see uh, Charles Mooley's photo. Uh, he needs to put uh, it on. Yeah, yeah, Charles Mooley. Put your video on. 
Charles Lee. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Mary, are we done? Yes, we are done. We can move on to the next presenter, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Professor Yunus. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing thank you, you in Kenya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so bye -bye. the next, thank you. The last, the last two presenters will be very brief. One of them is uh, Dr. Kimaru Sera, and she has a few minutes to say what she is doing with the persons who is enabled differently at the university. Dr. Kimaru Sera. Thank you, Professor. I take this opportunity to appreciate the invitation and now I want to say that I'm happy when we are sharing about youth and entrepreneurship. I want to present on empowering persons with disability, disabilities through decent business in Africa. Uh, we realize that 15% of the world population is constituted, constituted of persons with disabilities and 80% are those who are living in developing countries. Uh, we also get to know that uh, disability is highly correlated with poverty. And so most of the parents are economically handicapped, handicapped. So by my aim of, on what I'm presenting this uh, particular morning, I want to say that uh, we need to see how we can remove this uh, mindset of persons living with disability in that they can only handle small businesses uh, which may not give them a livelihood per se. And how do we achieve this? We can do this by providing proper mentorship and coaching initiatives so that the persons living with disabilities may be aware that there are people that are successful in businesses and have disabilities and therefore they'll build confidence and they'll put up businesses and they will uh, run with them and they'll build their self-esteem and eventually or ultimately we shall have families that are stable despite the, uh, the parents who are living with disabilities. Uh, secondly, I would wish to say that it's also good to make a deliberate move in terms of uh, exposing these people to successful businessmen. And, and this will again bring the issue of empowering them uh, deliberately and see that these people are able to achieve uh, at least a better living than what we have held before. In Africa, we are used, and maybe elsewhere, we are used to persons with disability uh, being found to live in the streets and depending on hard outs, uh, those that are given small tokens by people who are passed by. And so uh, we need to see on how we can improve this and uh, uh, see how we can empower them in that their businesses can be more decent, just more better than what we have been seeing uh, today. Uh, when we empower persons living with disabilities, we are likely to improve their livelihoods and we are also able to make them wealth creators. So my slogan this morning is to say that we can remove the street uh, um, persons with disability along the streets and we, be, we make them wealth creators other than street beggars. The other thing I would wish to say is that we can bring on board what we call financial inclusion, where the microfinance institutions that are supporting services and providing uh, maybe monies uh, for persons to run businesses, they can offer friendly terms for persons living with disabilities in that we can give uh, disability friendly inclusive uh, practices that are going to be supportive to persons living with disability in that they should not fear to approach a financier, they should not fear to approach a, a, a bank where they would need money to run their businesses, they would feel comfortable. So this is my, my dream and my desire that Africa can be changed and we can have persons with disability living decent lives through decent businesses. I would also urge the persons who are having, who are running businesses to also desire to preserve 5% of their jobs that they have within their businesses to persons living with disability. And this can also be source of finances. We all start somewhere. I, I want to uh, 
uh, concur with what Professor Yunus has said, that all of us were born entrepreneurs. And so even persons living with disability, they have a potential in them. If only they are given resources, if only they are economically empowered. So I would urge the microfinancial finance institution to also give privilege to these people and be friendly in their terms, that when they see a person with, with disability walking to their to their offices, they should see what they should offer and even lengthen their terms of, of in terms of cre uh, offering credit to these people. So this would be good. And I want to urge that everyone who is here, you be a good ambassador on how you can see this street beggar with a disability who is along your street. You see on how you can hold their hand and bring them up and see to them, see to it that they can run a better business and live a, live, a, a decent life. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That was quite powerful. That was quite powerful and uh, well said. And we'll come back to it if there is time. We have the last presenter, and because she also logged in late, a little penalty for that. So she will do two minutes because when we were allocating time, she was not there. So, Dr. Felistas, over to you, two minutes. Tell us what you have, and then we can be able to open five minutes to the plenary. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Professor. And I appreciate everyone for, for this time. And you can hear me? Yes, very well, very well. Yes, uh, my topic is calculating social enterprise build and employment. In With the two, two minutes, two minutes only. Yes, Please. yes, I'm going to really hurry up. Now, why I'm talking about triangulating is because the reason why we have so much unemployment in Africa is because of the populations. Over the decades, the population in Africa has grown and it is not in tandem with the growth of economic activity. And because of that, so many of our youths remain unemployed, they do not know what to do. And an economy that is unable to manage its youth and the energies that the youth has, then it's a lost economy. As such, I want us to look at different, different challenges that are caused by the great population, including the water, sanitation, environment, infrastructure, all those becomes a challenge when the population is greater than economic activities. However, looking at the other side of the coin, we are able to change all those challenges in benefits, social enterprises. All the youth uh, needs to do is to identify the problems that they have in their societies, and they're able to provide solutions to those uh, needs. And when they provide solutions to those needs in the society, they are likely to make money. I want to give an example of the issue of water shortages in the country or in Africa. That can be a business to the youth, and the youth just need to identify what is it that they can do to provide water to their society. And once they have solved that problem, then basically money will follow them. Let's look about the issue of sanitation and garbage. Again, that is another social enterprise. A problem in the society, a problem that can become an enterprise. Let's look at the pollution. All papers littered all over. That again can be a, a social enterprise. And basically what I'm saying is that if the youth is able to identify the key problems that is troubling their very societies, and they look for ways of providing solutions to those problems, then those become their businesses. And once they have built those businesses, they are sustainable, they will provide uh, solutions to the problems, and they will also be able to make uh, benefits. We all know that uh, the issue of population, of a population in Africa, has really become a major crisis, such that even the United Nations goal number eight is seeking to address that problem. And because of that, we in Africa can be able to provide by educating our youth and mentoring them to be able to identify the first problems that are existing in their society. So basically, it is the issue of calculating the societal needs to employment. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, we appreciate you have summarized what you wanted to say in six minutes into four minutes. Now, at this point, we have a chance to interact. Not very many minutes remaining, but about 12 minutes. But at this point, maybe I could give a direction that um, my colleagues who are with me at the venue, they could keep on checking on the chat. If there is any question, we could respond to it. And also, if there is an urgent uh, additional point from the persons who are, who, who are on board. And I could start by saying this, because you had the topical presentations, let us work together and come up with the little concepts, because this was a very good moment. We have shared our thinking. We have uh, issues to do with the sports and youth empowerment. We have uh, entrepreneurship. We have talked about, um, there is a presentation on the persons enabled differently and the entrepreneurial capacities. We have all these aspects that have been mentioned. The issue of, our, of, of intellectual property rights, the issue of uh, youth that are involved and the persons who are, are, are quite disadvantaged and they are on the street, who are the target of, uh, persons for Muli children family, all this. Let us put the concepts together, present it, and this can be a post conference undertaking. And this is my take. But now we can we can ask a question, uh, a provision for questions. Mary yes. Mo, tell me if yes. there is anything yes. in the chat. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor. We have Dr. Mugera stand up. Coordinate. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Thank you. My question could go to the presenter who presented on the the model business model for people who are enabled differently. Maybe I don't know from my experience. Could she share with us if there is any model that has worked anywhere that can be borrowed, especially for countries like Kenya? Which model has worked anywhere that we can borrow and then we try to implement it locally? If from my experience, please. Thank you. We can take two more and then we finish it up. Mary, lead us to another one. Yes, I haven't seen any other posts. Then uh, can you, you can, can go ahead. Dr. Doctor, Doctor Sarah. Okay, before Dr. Sarah comes in, uh, we have a Matayo, Professor Matayo's uh, had his raised up. Matayo? Matthias had his raised up. Okay, since he's still muted, maybe we can we can have uh, our presenter respond. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just um, curious about um, the issue of um, universities and um, researchers at the particularly at the PhD level. And um, I was thinking and suggesting that um, apart from people writing PhD works for the purpose of attaining a degree, I think the time has come for PhD projects, particularly PhD projects, to be tied, I mean, to be solution driven to societal problems. And in that wise, I think that can be promoted by ensuring that uh, proposals are made to go into a competition. And the one that is targeting solution to a major societal problem, particularly youth unemployment that we're talking about, could be given some um, support in terms of funding and implementation so that we can replicate what happened to Gogo and Stanford um, uh, University. Prof, prof, uh, prof, let's be brief. Let's be brief. Time up. Yes, I'm, I'm just done. I'm just done. Thank you. We can now go to Mary. Yeah. To Sarah, 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 and Mary. Sarah, thank you. Okay, thank you. And I, I thank Dominic for the question. Uh, I, I want to, uh, to say that we have many models that have been adopted to support persons with disabilities. However, I would say that uh, uh, we need to work out on a breaded uh, model which can operate for Africa. And so this is possible. 
I think it's all about academician and business people coming together and seeing on what can work well and uh, to target on persons able differently. I trust that you have heard me, Dr. Mugere. Yes, thank you. Uh, he, he has, and I want to add that even as he hears, even as he hears you, there is some echo, even as he hears you, I want to add that Muli's children family is also another model. And we could also adopt it for Dr. Mugere and ourselves. Back to our MC, Madam Mary, Dr. Mary Mugwe, so that she can end the session. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, who has done a very, very good job. We thank you very, very much. That was a very, uh, very resourceful kind of discussion on youth entrepreneurship and social business in Africa. Uh, special thanks uh, to Dr. Felista Jeru, uh, our moderator also, Professor Mwangi uh, Pitawanderi. Uh, we thank Madam Seno uh, Namwandi. We would also like to thank Professor Omatayo, Dr. Saraki Mari, and as well Dr. Uh, Pro Dr. Charles Mori for being here. Thank you so much also, Yunus for your kind contribution to this session. Uh, we thank everyone. The discussions continues on our chat and even as we go for a short break of that minute. Thank you and thank you very much, Asante. Thank you.